Thanks for staying with us. Now on COVID-19. River State Government, through the state's primary health care management board, said it has doubled its effort at her commitment towards taking COVID-19 vaccinations closer to the people in order to bridge the gap of poor vaccination records in River State. The move is aimed at addressing some of the issues in the knowledge and concerns on COVID-19 vaccines in the state. Some of the traders said they were being motivated due to the explanations on the efficacy of the vaccine as against the tales they had read on social media, alleging some negative effects of the vaccine. This is my first dose. What prompted me is because of the adverse effects this virus has had on people it has taken lives and has caused them um, economic setback and the harm it has caused some nations have not really bounced back. Let me just say, we're still, especially in Nigeria, we are yet to recover. Before I have doubt on the vaccine, I even tell my madam not to take it. But now I will advise her to come and take it, as I just reached from now. And I advise other people to come and take it because it is for our prevention of our health. Before now, uh, I was like having double mind about the vaccine. But I made up my mind because I have seen that the vaccine is highly important to us as uh, citizens of Nigeria. And at the same time, we need to take our vaccine so that we can be able to have our things done normal and also obey the rules and regulations of the country and also have our health and be safe in all ramifications of life. Because of the so-called conspiracy theory behind COVID-19 and the vaccine, but as in as concerned everything new, uptake will not be that easy. So continuous education about the importance of the vaccine. Yes, vaccine will not stop the infection, but it reduce the effect of the infection. So I want to advise people that they should listen to the head expert and then do the needful by submitting themselves for the vaccination. Now this is for the doubting thermoses who still do not believe COVID-19 is real. Believe it or not, a lot of people have died of it. Please let's not ignore the obvious effects and get vaccinated in a bid to keep up with the fight against the virus. Moving on, after a series of complaints by motorists, the Lagos State Government has now introduced a much easier system of registering their vehicles for roadworthiness. There has been a surge at some vehicles, inspection centers, and the aftermath of the newly introduced no vehicle inspection, no roadworthiness certificate policy. Our correspondent, Lovie Kukoyedekun, visited one of the centers at Ojodubega area to monitor the start to finish uh, registration. It all began from the gate. Then onwards to the registration and documentation point. If they are for that inspection, this is the first point of call to bring the vehicle here. From this point, 15 vehicles are directed to proceed to the parking facility, which can only accommodate a limited number of cars at once. Because that facility in here cannot take more than 15 vehicles at a go. So from that point, we give them the tags. Based on how they come, we now put them in this line. We are at the Ojodu Vehicle uh, Inspection Unit, Computerized Vehicle Inspection Unit, one of the centers out of the 26 centers established by the Lagos State Government where vehicles can be tested for roadworthiness. From this point, the vehicles are driven to the testing bay, categorized into three main phases, the emission stage to the matching base, alignment, shock absorber efficiency to the roller breaker tester, then proceed to the pit. Drop. Change. Pull up. Change. We do the pit based inspection. This, we check through the exhaust lining to see if there's leakage. 
we check the lower arm, the upper arm, the tie rod end, the steering rack, the, the torsion arm, in this case, we check the bushings and some other parts. As the waiting room, drivers anxiously anticipate the outcome of their tests. They describe the process as a welcomed idea, even though they have reservations. That they make the process more faster. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I feel they should make it faster. For those of us that are still going to our offices or going to our place of business, I've been here since after it. And if you look at the time now, it's about 11. So money is running out. The no inspection, no certificate of roadworthiness policy in Lagos State is a global standard to promote road safety. The Lagos State Government had announced in December 2021 that effective from January 2022, all vehicles registered in the state must be taken for physical inspection at any of the 27 Lagos computerized vehicle inspection service centers before a certificate of roadworthiness can be issued. This is the place where all the measurements have been taken and recorded and paraventure your vehicle gets to this point and the major fault is detected. It means you have to go back and get everything fixed and come back for a retest. From the Ojodu Computerized Vehicle Inspection Center here in Lagos, I'm Lovi Kuku Oyedoku reporting for Plus TV Africa. As part of efforts to boost food security in Nigeria, the Floor Milling Association of Nigeria, FMEN, in collaboration with the Central Bank of Nigeria, Anchor Borrower Program, ABP, has assured farmers of its readiness to sustain the tempo in wheat production across the country. The sufficiency of wheat production in Nigeria is to create more employment for teaming youths and women and to be self farmers in wheat production. Over the years, food security has been one of the major challenges that need to be addressed by the government, as Nigeria has been producing 20,000 tons of wheat, which is below the demands of the citizens. In the new innovative method of the Anchor Borough Program, Wheat farmers have produced large quantities for sufficiency across the country with over 40 million tons. Speaking at the Wheat Farmers Green Day in Zaria, the National Program Manager of FMEN, Aliyu Samaila, said the transformation of wheat farming has come to stay in the country, adding that it requires a strong vision backed by clear rules and responsibilities for all stakeholders to collaborate with farmers. Nigeria imports an average or spends an average of $4 billion. If we take the current exchange rate, that's almost $2 trillion naira. You know what that means. Uh, being taken out of the country, it doesn't only put pressure on foreign exchange, but it also denies farmers a means of livelihood who can grow and get some of that money or even all of it as time goes on. Part of the strategies which the CBN adopted is to ensure that we produce this seed, this uh, wheat crop in Nigeria to the extent that we will eliminate importation of this wheat. We also took another strategy to ensure that the availability of high yielding seed is made possible in Nigeria. Some of the beneficiaries of the program expressed satisfaction with the support of fertilizers, seedlings, and supervisions by staff under the program to cultivate their farmlands. You know that normally farming, when it requires an input, if it's available at that moment, it will give you the good yield. So 70% of the job was done by the company by providing the input for us. We had our fertilizer, we had our um, seed care, even the staff, they were always, we don't have to find someone else to supervise. Even when we're sleeping, they are on our farm supervising it for us and telling us what to do. The thing that I, I appreciate of that they did, one, they, pro they provide a good seed to me and good agronomic practice. Secondly, the fertilizer they give me, I use it. The nature of my farm, I'm very happy. 
my family are very happy because they don't have what to eat and to take them to school. They are done well because they have their extension workers. We call them and they visit the farm anytime, at any moment in 24 hours you will see them rounding the farm. The Anko Brewer programs are initiated in 15 states that include Kano, Kaduna, Jigawa, Kebi, Sokoto, Bauchi, Adamawa, Katsina, Gumbi, Plateau, Taraba, Zamfara, Niger and Yobi to boost wheat production. And finally on this week's edition of Plus Report is an interesting report where a serving core member in Iru local government development area Lagos has empowered 40 youths in her skill acquisition program. The area of focus where fashion designing, hairdressing, barbing, makeup arts and so on. It was a week training for the participants. Destiny Momo has more. Economic realities and the challenges of the work world now demand more than academic knowledge. Our teaming unemployed youth can certainly change their fortunes with marketable skills. Perhaps this was the motivation for Janice Akobaro, a seven core member in Lagos, to embark on skill acquisition training for youth as her personal project. In all, 40 participants were taken through different trainings for a week. Fashion designing, makeup artistry, hairdressing, barbing were some of the areas of focus. I'm so honored that I can actually make this great impact into the lives of my fellow youths. At this graduation ceremony, beneficiaries were grateful for knowledge received in skill acquisition. I would say a big thank you to Janice Apobaro for all the good things she has been doing for us. I'm so happy for this training since right from the day one of this acquisition skills. The NYSC state coordinator and others were impressed by this move from a serving co-member. It is what you have learned here and you impart in yourself and you work it out for yourself. These days there is no white collar. These are the things that are excelling. I recognize Ms. Janice Akpobaru, an alumnus of the college. She graduated in the Department of Food Technology and currently is serving a national <laughs> idea nation. Joy that we are witnessing this epoch-making event, which is coming from an art that considered the needs of people in the society. Janice Akobaro and other facilitators spoke on the importance of this journey and her personal gain in acquiring a skill so early in life. When I was in Yabatek, I was also using my skill to make money for myself. Putting all my best to teach them makeup. I didn't only teach them makeup, I introduced them to products and I also taught them how to tie gele perfectly. After I finished teaching this person bridal hair styling, she taught other students. I went to Oniru community and I also went to Boni camp. That was where I was able to meet them. And then I spoke to them about this project. Where, and they were so interested. In fact, a lot of them were not even in school. Like some, some were actually dropouts. That's what I mean. And then some actually came from the north. Invariably, these beneficiaries have been set on a path to self-reliance. Hopefully, they'll continue to hone these skills to carve a niche for themselves in their future endeavors. Destiny Mama, Plus TV Africa. Well, that's a quite commendable one and worthy of emulation. I mean, not everyone can put such impactful initiative to actualization. From me to you, Janice, well done, girl. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. But before we go, let's still remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. Thanks for watching.